Many of Kentucky's buildings, bridges, and roads came out of the Work Projects Administration, or the WPA. It was part of Roosevelt's New Deal that put millions of people to work during the Depression. Artists were employed through the WPA's Federal Art Project, and some of Kentucky's finest traditional crafts were included in an FAP project called the Index of American Design. Everyone is familiar with the WPA, but people are not as familiar with the Index of American Design. The Index of American Design was probably one of the grandest um, ideas related to the arts um, in, in the 20th century. The Index evolved as a work relief project established in order to sort of determine, okay, what's American about American art? The democratization of art in this country and the effects of the index on that were remarkable to be sure. Kentucky's role in the index is incredibly important. The index was a teaching tool as well as a design repository. And they were beginning to realize that a lot of these things were going to be lost if they weren't documented. To all of you, I say, we can now march forward, all of us together. You have a president coming into his new role in 1933 at the height of the Depression era, who is very devoted to bringing the country back, um, to setting it um, on its feet through government-sponsored public programs that are going to help the wide population in the United States, from farm relief and agriculture to industrial relief, and through the support of the arts. How unusual is that? And it was a sweeping program that he established under the New Deal and the Works um, Project Administration. And it was a federal art project that was devoted to establishing an archive of new art and documentation of arts that already existed and that might be lost forever through the years, but also putting artists to work. And one of the major projects that he established was the Federal Art Project Unit 1. And this was devoted to establishing what was called an Index of American Design that became a repository of the kinds of arts that had never been documented before. I think that one of the main points here is to take time to look at what's around you and to see the beauty in the everyday. This is something that modern Americans uh, could benefit from. The work in Kentucky was very important. There was as much uh, design and aesthetic achievements and ordinary objects in Kentucky at least as much, perhaps more, as anywhere else. So Kentucky's participation in the index was curated by Adele Brandeis, who was the niece of Justice Louis Brandeis. And each state had a curator. And so Adele Brandeis and her committee chose the objects that were included, and then artists came into Kentucky and depicted those. So Adele Brandeis went all over the state um, and sort of talking to people, going into people's private homes, getting into collections, and, um, and asking, can we record that for the index? She had a big job ahead of her to choose what was in and what was out. And uh, she included, of course, a, a large variety of, of artifacts. There's a, an exceptionally high quality of artisans in Kentucky who are making some of those products in the 19th century, who've come in from Europe, European immigrants, etc. And so when the index is put together in the 1930s, a lot of those objects are in private homes and in museums. Uh, they're still here in Kentucky, and so they become exactly what the index is looking for. I went to the National Gallery of Art. I was able to, uh, 
get a database of all the paintings. Then there was a database uh, on microfilm of all the watercolors. So I got the watercolors and uh, the database for the objects. So I now knew what I was looking for. And so then I went to the Frasier and they got excited about it. Now we have the exhibition. Sadly, I don't think as many people are familiar with the Index of American Design as, as it deserves. And through programs, through exhibitions, and through other public venues, there's an ongoing desire to keep promoting the Index of American Design and all the ideals that it embodied. To its credit, I think that the Fraser History Museum is doing a terrific job of sort of palling up or teaming up the objects with the drawings. And I think it's really fun for folks to go into the museum um, and see the antique and then see how it's rendered by an artist in the 1930s. We have organized uh, an exhibition at the Fraser called Kentucky by Design that documents Kentucky's role in the Index of American Design. So there were about 300 watercolors done in Kentucky. They were never exhibited. They live uh, at the National Gallery in Washington. And so all the ones that we're showing in this exhibition got framed up, particularly for the exhibit. So this is not like we're borrowing things that people can see every day in Washington and we're bringing them to Kentucky. We're bringing things to Kentucky that haven't been seen in 80 years since they were hand painted. You have the first show that has ever looked at the index of American design for a single state. I think one of the great benefits of the index was to elevate the craftsperson as an important member of America's cultural community to say craftspeople are just as important and craft is just as important as fine arts. Many of the items in Kentucky's portion of the index were original Shaker crafts. When restoration began here at Pleasant Hill and at South Union Shaker Village, the index was a good resource. The color illustrations showed the details of all the elements that made Shaker Crafts Shaker. That's our show for tonight. Thanks for watching, and we'll look for you again next time. I'm Doug Flynn, enjoying life, Kentucky life.